Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznos here and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some items that I found that have gone up a lot in price recently, but I'm also going to explain the reasons as to why they went up and show you how you can potentially take advantage of these to make some money for yourself through PVMing or Slayer. Now keep in mind this isn't an in-depth guide on these things, but I'll leave links to various good ones in the description if you want to do these methods yourself. I plan to test these methods out today and show you the results, so let's get into it. So the first item I found just by like chance that absolutely shocked me was the Armadil Battle Staff. No, not the tier 95 Fractured Staff of Armadil, the tier 77 Armadil Battle Staff. I remember this being like 20 mil, but I knew it was decent as a spec weapon, but I had I actually had to buy this staff when I did my latest video when I used legacy gear at the fight kiln and when I bought it I was just shocked at the price. The GE says 89 mil but these are actually going for over 200 mil right now which is an absolute huge amount and the reason these things are going for so much is mostly because the demand is there for them. We've seen magic get buffed the past year and it's now considered probably the most powerful style. The Armadil Battle Staff spec is very 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 good in an essence of finality because it does five hits in a short period of time and they can all crit and cause more auto attacks which synergizes amazingly with the fractured staff of armadil this means that this staff is a must-have for all max majors and it gets put into an essence of finality which is why the price point is so high right now but how do you get this staff and can you make any money trying to get it well, you can actually get this staff by killing Glacors, the Slayer creatures, and creating an Orb of Armadil. Now, an Orb of Armadil is made by combining 100 shards of Armadil, and the shards of Armadil are dropped very commonly from normal Glacors at about a 1 in 10 drop rate, so it's extremely common and consistent. So I'm going to go test this out by killing Glacors and see how much money I can make in one hour. So I went to Glacors, and it's a lot easier than I remember. It was a bit annoying at first because I had to get used to killing them minions but after I got used to it I was really killing them all fast. I used the new Omni power that's buffed with the normal mode Zuck cape and it's really really good. After I killed the minions I would just use the Omni power and it would basically kill the Glacier in one ability which meant for super fast kills um, after I dealt with the minions so I think I was getting like two kills every minute or so so around 100 to 120 kills per hour depending on my speed and everything. So let's go look at my loot now. So in the hour I I received not much normal loot as glacers don't usually drop that much common loot in terms of value but they do have a chance to drop the steadfast rage fire and glaven boots and the glaven and rage fire boots actually go for a decent amount although these are sort of rare you will get them eventually however we did get in one hour 12 shards of armadil which before wasn't very much when the armadil staff was lower but now that's 200 mil for an armadil staff that is 2 million gp plus per shard or 24 million GP in the hour for just the shards not including the chance at the boots. The nice thing about this is I didn't even get lucky because you can't really get lucky with how commonly these are dropped. You're really going to get the same amount usually around there every hour. So I would say it's reasonable to think if you can get around 100 kills per hour in the long term you can easily make 20 to 30 mil per hour from here depending on your speed and of course factoring in the boots and normal loot. The nice thing about this method is it's super consistent the armadil shards are common. It's not like you can really go dry for a long period on those. The only downside to this method is you have to commit to doing this for around 10 or more hours to get the complete 100 shards to make the staff because that's the only way you can convert them to money. You can't just sell the shards separately. But all in all, this method is super good and has basically 5x'd in GP per hour just because of how much the armadil battle staff is now. So next is an item that I basically found by accident too and that's the Hydrix. Now the Hydrix is obtained by purchasing it with 300 Reaper points which most of you probably already know but this Hydrix I actually bought it after saving up my Reaper points for a bit and it sold instantly for 98 mil which is way way more than I remember Hydrix is going for and they have really gone up a ton in price recently. Back in August they were around 60 mil now they've gone up to almost 100 mil which is almost double the price in just three or four months. 
once. Now of course this is just earned through doing reaper tasks, but there's a few ways that you can actually make this much easier for yourself to obtain, and I've touched on these a few months ago in my settings video, but so many people didn't know about these that I thought I'll mention them here too. Now the first is the reaper's choice purchasable option that costs 250 reaper points. And now this is absolutely so much worth your purchase, it is one of the best purchases I've ever made and I do not regret the reaper points at all, but this basically gives you a 10% chance of being able to choose your assignment when receiving a new one. This means normally you could sometimes go and have to skip the max 5 rerolls, but with this basically every day you'll have a much much better chance at picking the exact task you want, as this 10% chance also counts for the rerolls. I earned so many reaper points by having this and just being able to basically choose my task most days while I was camping the arch glacier. I would go and half the time I was able to just outright pick my task, so if you're wondering if this is worth the points, it definitely, definitely is, and it's a must-have in the long run for doing Soul Reaper. Now something else you can also do is if you go to the Slayer options in the settings menu, this is something I've touched on too in the past, you can enable or disable group assignments, so if you don't like Barrows rather than 6, you can disable those. But you can also enable larger tasks, which is absolutely huge. This means you receive twice the number of souls assigned per task and a boost to Reaper points. So this is essentially just an increase to the amount of Reaper points you can get every day. Of course, you need to kill a higher number of bosses, but if you're getting a task for 5 Arch Glacier, you probably would be okay with a task for 10 of them if it meant more points. So like I said in previous videos, make sure you always do your Reapers. They are better than ever right now. So this is something that I noticed the past month or so, and that is that Elite Dungeons 2 or the Dragonkin Laboratory has gone up dramatically in price. This is for most considered the easiest Elite Dungeon, but also was previously considered the worst in terms of loot. However, now the Draconic Energy dropped by the Blackstone Dragon has skyrocketed in price. This dust was around 175k each just 3 short months ago. Now it's over 500k GP each. This means not only are you getting a good amount of Draconic Energy per kill like you would at Elite Dungeons 1, but unlike Elite Dungeons 1, you actually have the chance of getting the big codex drops like the Greater Barge Codex, which goes for over 400 mil, and the Greater Fury Codex, which goes for over 300 mil. Now these codexes aren't too rare and account for probably like 10 million GP plus per run if you're soloing, so the Draconic Energy, however, has probably increased so much for the same reason that the Armadale Battle Staff we talked about earlier has increased. Magic is just so good and powerful, and many people want to make that Tier 92 Elite Tectonic, which uses a bunch of that Draconic Energy. So I decided to go and see how much money I could get in a run at ED2, and ED2 has always been one of my favorite dungeons. All I need to complete the log, actually, is the Flurry Codex and the Pet, so I might have to grind this out and get a ton of kills and try to finish that one off for the next road to party hat since the money is just so good right now. I like how the dungeon is laid out and it just feels nice to go through. But in terms of loot, after doing the run, we got 11 energy from the kill, which took me a bit over 20 minutes for the run. It is possible to actually get up to 4 runs per hour based on the PVME discord. I'm just not that skilled though. But in normal loot alone, that is 7 mil or so in 20 minutes of work, not including any codexes and stuff. 3 months ago, it would have been like 2 million GP. So this is such good money right now compared to what it was before. So the last thing I just want to touch on quick here is some Something that I found that is going for an extraordinary amount of money, which is the Cinderbane gloves. Now, I remember these being like 50 mil, and then I remember them going up to being like 85, 90 mil, which was pretty high for them. But I just went and bought some, and they are a hundred twenty million GP is how much it was costing me to buy them, which is just such a huge price for Cinderbanes. Uh, you can actually get these from the Lost Grove creatures, so Lost Grove creatures might be a really good test to do now. Not only are Cinderbanes extremely expensive, uh, but also you have the chance for the Grimoire pages from the Lost Grove creatures now, so uh, another item I just wanted to quickly mention at the end here because I just found it recently and wanted to uh, let you guys know. But if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to leave a like. I hope this can maybe make you guys some money. Um, you know, Glacors, I would possibly make a guide on if that's something you guys want to see. I'm not sure if there's any up-to-date guides recently, um, but maybe I could make one on the Glacors and how to get a good amount of kills per hour. So if you want to see that, let me know below. And yeah, I thought this was just a 
fun little video to tell you about some items that I found that have really risen and show you how you can make some money off it. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.